Hello everyone, in today's topic, we are going to talk about proving triangles congruent. The idea of a congruence two geometric figures with exactly the same size and shape. How much do you need to know about two triangles to prove that they are congruent? So you learned in the past that if all six pairs of corresponding parts, sides, and angles are congruent, then the triangles are congruent. So if we are talking of corresponding parts, they are the parts of triangles wherein they are in relative position. So if we have triangle ABC and triangle DEF, so AB corresponds to DE, BC corresponds to EF, AC corresponds to DF, wherein AB is also congruent to DE, BC is also congruent to EF, and AC is also congruent to DF. When it comes to angles, Angle A corresponds to angle D, angle B corresponds to angle E, and angle C corresponds to angle F. Angle A is also congruent to angle D, angle B is congruent to angle E, and angle C is congruent to angle F. So therefore, we can conclude that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. But today, I will explain to you three theorems or postulate that will prove that two triangles are congruent using at most three corresponding parts. So do you need all six? It's a big no. So today we are going to talk about SSS, SAS, ASA, AAS, and HL. So when we are talking about triangle congruence, we are going to use the SSS, the SAS, the AAS, the HL, the ASA theorem. So SSA is not sufficient for congruency. It can make two different triangles. So when you have the SSA, you can, you can conclude that the two triangles are not congruent at all. So the first one is side, 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 or in short, SSS. So if we have two triangles, ABC and triangle DEF, so AB is congruent to DE. Why? Because it is given. It is obviously uh, drawn in the diagram. So because we have this uh, symbol for congruency like that. So BC is congruent to EF, given, and AC is congruent to DF, it's given. So therefore, since we have the side-side-side congruence, we therefore conclude that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Now let's move on to the next one, side-angle-side, or the SAS. In here, we are going to prove that angle ABC is congruent to DEF using SAS. So the first thing we need to have here is AB is congruent to DE. And then angle A is congruent to angle D. Then the third one, AC is congruent to DF. So from here, we have the side included angle and side. So we have SAS congruent. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF by SAS congruence. What is included angle? It is the angle between two sides. So meaning if we have two sides, we call the angle between them as included angle. So in the first diagram, the included angle is angle G. The second diagram, the included angle is angle I. And the third, in the third diagram, the included angle is angle H. Now, let us name the included angle. So, Y, E, and E, S. Even though we don't have the diagram, so 
uh, hint here or a technique is that whatever the letter common to both the sides, it is the included angle. So in YE and ES, we have angle E. In ES and YS, we have angle S. In YS and YE, it is angle Y. Now let's move on to angle side angle or the ASA. For this one, First, we have the angle. So, angle A is congruent to angle D. And then, side AB is congruent to DE. And angle B is congruent to angle E. So, we have angles included side and angle. So, therefore, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF because of ASA congruence. So, what is included side? Included side is the side between two angles. So in the first diagram, the included side is GI or IG. In the second diagram, the included side is HI or IH. In the third diagram, the included side is GH or HG. Now, let us name the included side. So in here... If we have two angles, we just need to combine them, like in angle Y and angle E, so the included side is YE. In angle E and angle S, the included side is ES. And in angle S and angle Y, the included side is SY. Now let's move on to another one. So the angle-angle side or the AAS. So in here, the first statement is all about the angle. So angle. Angle A is congruent to angle D. And then another angle. Angle B is congruent to angle B. Angle E. Angle B is congruent to angle E. And then the last one is side. So BC. BC. BC is congruent to EF. So in here, it is a non-included side. So it is a side that is not included in between angles. So we can conclude that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF by AAS congruence. Now, let us take a closer look on the difference between the ASA and AAS. As you can see here, in ASA, between two angles, there is an included side. So the S here stands for included side. Whereas in AAS congruence, the S stands for non-included side, meaning it is not included. Now let's move on to the last theorem or congruence. It is the hypotenuse leg theorem or the HL. If the hypotenuse and leg of one right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of another right triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So using the two column proof, we have the first column, which is the statement, and the second column, which is the reason. For the first statement, AB is congruent to DE. So the hypotenuse. It is given because it is obviously stated in the diagram. CB is congruent to FE. So it is given because it is stated, obviously stated in the diagram. And then I included uh, angle C is, con is congruent to angle F. Why? Because they are right angles. And right angles are always congruent to each other. So therefore, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF using the HL theorem. Why HL theorem? Because it is a right triangle. And HL theorem is only applicable when the triangles are right. Now, there is a warning here that no SSA postulate. So there is no such thing as an SSA postulate. So if you can see the two triangles are proven through SSA, you can conclude that it is not they are not congruent. Now, another one. There is no such thing as an AAA postulate. So, if you can see that two triangles are 
using the AAA postulate, you can conclude that they are not congruent at all. So avoid the triple A and the SSA. So in here, there are only five correspondence or congruence that you can use. The SSS, the AS, ASA, the SAS, the AAS, and HL. Big note to SSA and AAA. Now, let us try this one. For the first set of diagram in here, it is SAS because side, angle, side. In the second diagram, we have ASA, angle, included side, angle. For the third, it is SSA and it's a big no. For this one, obviously, side, side, side. So SSS. Now, let us have another one. This one is triple A because angle, 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 which is a big, a big no. And then the second one is ASA, angle, included side, angle. And then the third one, it is angle or side, angle, side, SAS. And for the fourth one, it is side, side, angle which is a big no. Now, let us try this one. So, let us state the reason first and then let us name the postulate. For this one, it is reflexive property. Reflexive property is used when two triangles uh, share a common side. So, here, reflexive property. So, in here, side, angle, side. So, it is... SAS. In here, vertical angles are congruent. So therefore, this is side, angle, side. So it is SAS. And in here, vertical angles are congruent. So we have side, angle, side. Another SAS. And in here, we have reflexive property. They, call, they share a common side. And let us take a look, side, 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 angle, which is a big no. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching. See you again next time. Bye.